Hello there, and thanks for tuning into this video. This little segment really is an intro to an intro. I filmed one of my little adventures last night. I uh, thought since the upper vetter is closed to fishing above Tamahai, I'd go up there and do a little cleanup and uh, a little adventuring without bothering any steelheaders trying to catch a fish. And, um, I did find a couple of steelhead and I filmed them and I was really happy about it. I was excited that I, you know, I got to see steelhead in the wild, in the river, doing their thing. And, you know, I, I, was, I was pretty happy, but then the more I thought about it, it also made me kind of upset because both of these fish were not happy, vibrant, healthy fish. They had clearly suffered some damage from being caught and released. So one of the fish had a damaged eye and some fungus and the fish that uh, there's a buck in the in the video where you know it's a little bit more colored up has been in the river for a while and there's some fungus on the side of his face and one of the eyes looks like it's damaged and there's also some fungus starting on the tail where somebody would have grabbed it uh, during uh, a catch and release and I really kind of thought well there's got to be more to this story than just me showing a little bit of video of a fish. I think this is a great opportunity to make people think a little bit more about their fish handling and just about catch and release in general and what it means. I practice catch and release very sparingly. I don't have a, an issue with anybody doing catch and release. I certainly used to do it a lot more when I was younger. I used to catch buckets of minnows and, and look at them and play with them and then toss them back <laughs> in the lake. And uh, so, and of course I catch and release some fish. The ones that are not legal to keep, the ones that are too small, um, or the ones that are not suitable for eating, I catch them, I, I release them as gently as I can. But uh, I think that there's a feeling in a large segment of the angling community that catch and release is harmless to the fish. And I would encourage some thoughtful debate about this topic because when I see fish like I saw yesterday night that clearly have suffered some abuse and I don't know what happened really. I mean, maybe somebody did mistreat them, right? Maybe somebody dragged them up on the beach and scraped their heads and that, but I think that from what I saw, this was damage that was caused just from maybe a hook going from the inside of the mouth and into the eyeball, or maybe a lure as the fish is fighting, a lure rubbing up against their face. And what I'm getting at is that it isn't always harmless. When, when you catch and release a fish, there's always a chance that that fish is going to develop a fungal infection that will eventually kill that fish. So just because they swam away strong, doesn't mean that no harm was done and I would really hope that what comes out of this video is a little bit of deep thinking on your part about what it means to, to catch and release a fish and you know there, there are definitely consequences to our actions and I'm not here to make anybody feel bad about what they're doing I just want you to give some thought about what the consequences are and, and you know do I want to you know if you've caught five fish do you want to go out and catch 50 and release them that day like you know what, what are the what, what does it mean what are the consequences I don't know I haven't got it all figured out I, <laughs> I think maybe I should do a whole episode on on fishing ethics but please let's have a discussion about it leave me a comment and if you disagree with me, leave me a comment. That's great. I, um, I want to hear from you. I want to have some discussion. As long as you keep it polite, your comment will be left up. And um, I hope you enjoy the video. When you see those clips of the fish, watch them twice and, and see what I'm talking about. And see how you feel about it. I... Uh, I definitely hope that this does some good, but, and I, I hope it encourages some discussion. So, I hope you enjoy the video. I'm gonna roll on it 
right now. Hello there, and welcome to another episode of Peter Herman Adventures. I think my face might be a little bit red. I kind of ran here because I'm running out of daylight. It's about 6.30 already, and it's going to be completely dark by 7.30. So I have just a quick little after work mission here at Thurston Meadows. I'm going to go for a quick dive and uh, see if I can find some fishing gear. Water is beautifully clear, so if there are any steelhead hanging out in here, I might be able to spot one. And uh, if there's any garbage, I'll haul it out of there. So uh, yeah, quick little panoramic. Show you guys what, where we are at. It's a really nice spot on the Vedder River. Nice big pool here. Yeah, I'm really looking forward to this little mission. See what we can see, see what we can find. And I'll show you some stuff along the way. So far I'm liking this expedition. None of the gear I found here is very good, but there are a couple of steelhead in that pool. So uh, you probably saw the footage, there's one uh, with some damage on its eye there that's uh, not looking that great. But out of the corner of my eye I also saw a big colored up one. Sort of a, a really pretty spawning fish. So I'm gonna go look through there again, see if I can spot those two. Hopefully they're not uh, scared of me, but they were pretty calm. I got close to those fish. So hopefully I can get a little bit more footage of them, but there's really fast current where they are. I can't really, I can't really kick hard enough to stay put there.
I think I'm gonna have to call that mission accomplished. Got to film some steelhead, even though very briefly. The current is very strong where they're sitting, and I, I just can't kick hard enough to keep keep uh, pace with them there. Uh, appear to be only two fish in the whole pool. I swam around and looked everywhere, and the water's nice and clear, so that's kind of disappointing. In my mind, I was hoping there would be like ten of them in here, you know, showing a nice healthy run, but nope, just those two fish, and... Um, both of them appear to have some eye damage. I'm, I'm gonna have to review the footage, so that was kind of disappointing to see. Obviously, somebody mistreated those fish at some point. So, oh, I'm so cold. I'm shaking. Good thing the GoPro has excellent image stabilization. I can't feel my toes or my fingers, so. Uh... Thanks for watching. See you next time.